This is the banana and applesauce muffin demonstration video. Your cooking principles are as follows. One, the muffin method of mixing. Muffins are mixed by the muffin method. The muffin method consists of three steps. Step one, we sift all our dry ingredients together. Step two, we combine all our liquid ingredients together. And step three, we make a well in the dry ingredients and add the liquids in all at once. Cooking principle number two, muffins are a type of quick bread. Quick breads are quick and easy to make. They rise quickly because they use baking powder and or baking soda, but not yeast. Leavening agents are ingredients that cause our products to rise. Baking powder is the leavening agent most frequently used in flour mixtures. It is a commercially prepared leavening agent made from an acid and a salt form, soda, which is usually sodium bicarbonate, and starch, which is usually cornstarch. When mixed with a liquid, they create carbon dioxide gas, which will cause our muffins to rise. Baking soda will act as a leavening agent when it's combined with another acidic substance, such as buttermilk or sour cream, vinegar, or even cream of tartar. When it's combined with one of these ingredients, it too will also produce carbon dioxide gas that will help raise our flour mixture. In this case, our muffins. Cooking principle number three. Muffins are an example of a drop batter. This describes the consistency of a muffin mixture before it goes in the oven. The mixture is thick enough to be dropped from a spoon, but too thick to be poured from a bowl. The reason why the mixture is this consistency is because there's approximately one part liquid ingredients to two part dry ingredients. Ingredients. We're going to start with the banana muffin first. 250 milliliters of all purpose flour. Gluten is the protein substance in flour which forms strong elastic strands when mixed with the liquid. Heat will harden this protein and the muffin will be held in its risen state. 5 milliliters of baking powder. Baking powder is a leavening agent that when combined with a liquid will help produce the carbon dioxide gas needed to leaven our muffin. 1 milliliter of salt. Salt enhances natural flavors found within any baking product. Today, this will enhance our banana and our nutmeg. One milliliter of baking soda. Baking soda is a leavening agent, but needs to be combined with an acid in order to produce carbon dioxide gas. 125 milliliters of sugar. Sugar will sweeten our muffin. Sugar also caramelizes when it's subjected to the heat of the oven. This will cause our muffin to turn golden brown. One mil nutmeg. Nutmeg is a spice that will add flavor to our banana muffin. One large egg. Egg contributes to the nutrition of the mixture, but also is known as an emulsifier. An emulsifier will bind two unlikely products together, such as milk and our oil. 50 milliliters of oil. Today we're using canola oil. This will have a tenderizing effect as it interferes with the development of the gluten. This will make our muffin soft. 25 milliliters of milk. Using milk will provide added nutrition, but we also need the liquid to help activate our baking powder. One milliliter of vinegar. The vinegar is needed to help activate our leavening agent, baking soda. One ripe banana. The banana is our main flavor of our muffin today. Look for a banana that has more brown spots on the outside of the peel. It'll be easier to mash. 75 milliliters of walnuts. Walnuts will add additional flavor to our muffins as well as help make our muffins have a crunchy texture. Let's go over the ingredients for the applesauce muffins. 250 milliliters of all-purpose flour. Flour provides the structure of our muffin. Five milliliters of baking powder. Baking powder is a leavening agent that creates carbon dioxide to help make our muffin rise. This time, applesauce will be the liquid that helps cause this reaction. One milliliter of salt. Salt enhances natural flavors. In the applesauce muffin, it will be the cinnamon, allspice, and applesauce. Two milliliters of baking soda. 
This leavening agent will require an acid to create carbon dioxide gas. Three milliliters of cinnamon. This spice comes from the inner bark of a tree and is being added as extra flavor in our applesauce muffin. One milliliter of allspice. Allspice is often mistaken for a blend of spices because its flavor profile seems like it's a blend of nutmeg, pepper, cinnamon, and cloves. It's actually a dried on ripe berry from the pimenta dioca tree, which is found in southern Mexico and Central America. 75 milliliters of brown sugar. Brown sugar will not only add extra color to our applesauce muffins, but it will give it a unique flavor of molasses. 50 milliliters of raisins. Raisins will add a unique sweetness as well as texture to our muffins. One large egg. Eggs are emulsifiers. They bring together ingredients that don't normally like to mix. In this muffin, it will be the oil and the applesauce. 40 milliliters of oil. Oil helps tenderize the muffin so that the texture is soft. This muffin uses less oil than the other due to the fact that the applesauce will also add moisture to the muffin. 125 milliliters of applesauce. Applesauce is not only contributing to the flavor of the muffin, but it's also helped activating the leavening agents as well as tenderizing the muffin and creating its soft texture. That is your ingredient list for both the banana and the applesauce muffins. Equipment. For this recipe, you will need measuring equipment, dry measures, liquid measure, and small measures, metal spatula, custard cups, a six or 12 cup muffin tin, six to 12 paper baking liners, a set of mixing bowls, including the small, medium, and large, a metal fork, a metal spoon, a sieve, a metal pie plate, a wooden spoon, rubber spatula, oven mitts, hot mat, cooling rack, toothpicks, cutting board, and a chef's knife. Method. Step one. Bechette stands for the beginning steps that you need to do at the start of your lab. B stands for books and bags. They should be away either at the back of the classroom or under your table. A stands for apron, which you need to put on to help protect your clothing. S stands for sleeves. You need to roll them up past your elbows. H stands for long hair that touches the shoulders that needs to be tied back or hats that need to be removed. C stands for chairs that should be tucked under your table and out of your way. H stands for hands that should be washed properly for 30 seconds using hot water and soap. E stands for equipment, which you should be getting out as quickly as possible without wasting time. And T stands for the towels that you need to pick up. You need at least two dishcloths and two tea towels. Step two, use oven racks three and four. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. To figure out oven racks levels three and four, start by counting from the bottom up. To preheat the oven, you need to hit the bake button and then use the arrows to set the temperature. Step three, prepare the muffin tin with baking liners or grease the bottoms of each muffin cup with shortening or spray them with oil. Shortening has a higher smoke point, which means that it will not burn or brown as easily. Don't worry if you have empty spots in your muffin tin. I will show you how to deal with that later. Step four, for the banana muffin only, in a small bowl, mash bananas, 
end. If you're using walnuts, chop finely. Mash the bananas with a fork. Make sure that you get them into an even, smooth mixture. For the walnuts, make sure you're using a chef's knife and gently go back and forth using a rock and chop motion. Be careful that you do not get your fingers anywhere near the blade. Step 5. Sift flour, measure, and sift again into a large bowl. Sift together remaining dry ingredients into the flour, lightly stir together. Sifting flour has two functions for our recipe. First function is to remove any lumps that might be in our flour due to moisture in the air. The second reason that we want to sift flour is to add in extra air, which will help leaven our product in the end, creating a light texture. Be careful when you remeasure the flour that you gently scoop it up with your metal spoon. You can easily deflate the air that you just added into the flour if you're being too rough. For the banana muffin only, your dry ingredients include flour, baking powder, salt, baking soda, sugar, and the nutmeg. Sifting your dry ingredients together will ensure that your leavening agent, as well as the salt, will end up equally distributed throughout the batter. If you find that your sugar is lumpy, you may gently use a spoon to help press it through the sieve. For the applesauce muffin only, your dry ingredients include flour, baking powder, salt, baking soda, cinnamon, allspice, and brown sugar. Sift together all the dry ingredients except for the brown sugar. Brown sugar is too large to press through the sieve. When you measure brown sugar, pack the brown sugar into a dry measure, squishing out all the air so that you have a most accurate measurement. It should look like a little sandcastle when it comes out of the measure. That's how you know you did it right. Step 6. Banana muffin only. If using, add chopped walnuts to the dry ingredients. Make sure the walnuts are all even pieces. Step 6. Applesauce muffin only. If using, add raisins to the dry ingredients. Here's a pro tip. Rehydrate your raisins by microwaving them for one to two minutes in a liquid measure filled with water. Make sure to drain them before adding them to the dry ingredients. This will ensure that your raisins will not dry out further in the oven, instead will remain juicy and succulent in your muffin. Step seven, in a medium bowl, beat the egg with a fork. Crack the egg on the surface of the counter. Cracking the egg on the bowl might result in shell going into your muffin. Make sure that you mix the egg white and the egg yolk very well. The emulsifying properties happen only within the egg yolk. Step eight, measure and combine the liquid ingredients with the egg. This is the second step of the muffin method. Banana muffin only, liquid ingredients would include egg, oil, milk, vinegar, and mashed banana. When measuring your liquid ingredients, be sure not to measure directly over the bowl. If you do, and you might accidentally overflow your small measure and spill extra liquid into your bowl. This would result in a higher liquid to dry ratio than the drop batter requires. Applesauce muffin only, the liquid ingredients would be the egg, the oil, and the applesauce. Although thick in texture, applesauce is technically a liquid ingredient. Make sure you use a liquid measure to measure it. Step nine, make a well in the center of the dry ingredients. Pour the liquid ingredients into the well all at once. A well is essentially a hole in the middle of the flour for you to pour the egg mixture in. Make sure, whether it's banana or the applesauce, you use a wooden spoon so that you are gentle on the flour. Step 10. With a wooden spoon, stir the mixture just until the dry ingredients are moistened. Do not over mix. 
The batter should be lumpy. Over mixing will result in muffins with a smooth peak top and a tough, heavy texture with tunnels. This is the third step of the muffin method. The mixing step is a critical one of the muffin method. This will make sure that you have light, tender muffins. Because the batter has high proportion of flour, which also has strong gluten, it can easily be overmixed with the wrong tool. Most recipes will advise that you stir gently with a wooden spoon until the dry ingredients are just moistened. The batter should be very lumpy. Smooth batter indicates that you overmixed and your muffins in the end will have tough, chewy centers with tunnels going through the insides. Step 11. Fill the baking liner two-thirds full. Baking liners can also be filled until three-fourths full. If you do this, it is advised that you have a deeper cup muffin tin. Make sure you fill each muffin cup with the same amount of batter. This will result in even baking. Experiment time! Let's over mix a muffin! By the way, this is what you should not do. Here, I'm going to use the wrong tool for the wrong job. I'm going to use a metal spoon to crazy over mix the dough. What you're going to notice is that the dough is no longer lumpy. It is super smooth like cake batter and it almost pours out of the bowl like a pour batter, not a drop batter. Doing this will also destroy all that lovely air that you sifted into the flour. Look how smooth that top of that batter is compared to the lovely lumpy bumpy tops of that drop batter we made before. Step 12. Wipe any spilt batter from the muffin tin. Fill any empty muffin cups half full with cold water. This will ensure that the temperature on the muffin tin is evenly distributed, resulting in a better bake. Step 13. Bake for 20 to 25 minutes. If the baking liners were filled 3 fourths full, increase the baking time by 5 minutes. Therefore, bake for 25 to 30 minutes. To set the timer on the oven, first click the timer on off button. Then use the up and down arrows to set the time that you need for your baking. Once you let go of the on off arrows, your clock will then begin ticking down in seconds. Before test for doneness. Let's check the banana muffins first. I'm going to put a hot mat down on the countertop to protect it from being burnt from the hot pan. Make sure you use oven mitts when taking it out of the oven. First test for Dennis I will do is lightly touch the tops of the muffins to see if it springs back. Then I might check the center of a muffin with a toothpick to see if it comes out clean and dry. Next, let's check the applesauce muffins. You're going to notice that they are darker in color. That's because of the molasses found within the brown sugar. The test for Dennis I will do is the same as the banana muffins. Touch lightly on the tops to see if it springs back. When it does, that tells me the gluten structure inside the muffin has set and there's no raw dough underneath. I will also double check with a toothpick in the center of one of the muffins. The toothpick should come out dry and clean. Step 14. When muffins are ready, immediately remove the muffins from the muffin tin and cool on a cooling rack. Use two forks to gently lift the muffins out of the muffin tin. They should release pretty easily because you use paper baking liners. If you use shortening and spray oil and find that they are sticking, gently use a metal spatula to help release the muffin from the tin. Make sure to remove the muffins immediately from the tin. The tin is still the same temperature as the oven was. If you leave them in, they will keep cooking and you will end up with burnt bottoms on all your muffins. 
If you follow the recipe correctly, your yield should be six to seven muffins for groups of two. Groups of three should be nine to 11 muffins. Test for doneness. First test. Insert a toothpick into the center of the muffin. If ready, the toothpick will come out dry and clean. Second test. Lightly touch the top of the muffin with the finger. If ready, the muffin will spring or bounce back quickly. Standards First, slightly rounded top muffin should not be peaked. Second, crust is light golden brown with pebbled, slightly bumpy appearance. Muffin should not have a smooth surface. Third, small even grain. Muffin should not have big air tunnels. Fourth, tender in texture. Muffin should not have a tough, heavy texture. Fifth, good volume. Look at the picture. You can see what the muffin looked like before it was baked and after. Six, golden brown. Whether it be banana or applesauce, they should have a lovely color at the end of their baking. Seventh, Delicate flavor. The muffin should be a balance of all the ingredients included in its making. You should not have one ingredient overpowering the other, such as too much of the spice added. Let's take a look inside the muffins. First, let's check out the banana muffin. Here I'm going to take the gluten one that we overmixed and the regular muffin with a bumpy top. Notice the size difference. When we look at the top of them, you can see clearly the gluten muffin has a really smooth side. When I cut it open, you can see that there are giant air tunnels inside the muffin. Let's cut open a regular one. Now this muffin has an even fine grain texture inside with no air tunnels. Let's look inside the applesauce muffin now. Here they are side by side, the smooth gluten one versus the bumpy, well-mixed one. Inside the bumpy one is a really even texture. Inside the gluten one, you can obviously see the air tunnels. Over mixing made a huge difference on the inside texture of these muffins. Muffins are an easy to prepare quick bread that are often the first flour mixture attempted by all beginning cooks. I hope your muffins turn out just as great as mine did. Happy baking. Thanks for watching.